Why is it that you didn't get as dirty as I got? Uh -huh. You don't know? I guess you know how to work clean, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So well, we are all done chopping hay and chopping corn. Then the boys are getting ready to take off the flotation tires here, put regular tires on there so that we can haul grain corn. And I had a company reach out to me back in like the 1st of September or so. I get emails all the time, just like any other person that's putting videos on YouTube to do this collaboration or that one. Usually what I get, I get a ton of requests to uh, promote gaming whatever and I don't even do that stuff but I did have a company reach out to me with something worthwhile and I kind of forgot about it I knew they were gonna they said they were gonna send it but um, I kind of forgot about it what we have in this box is an airbag jack that is good for I don't know 11 what's it what the heck is it good for uh I want to say it's good for 11 ton. So we're going to pull it out of the box here. We usually use bottle jacks, uh, 20 ton air operated bottle jacks. Um, this, the beauty with this airbag jack is it's got a, a slightly lower uh, starting point. It's, you can get it underneath something with less clearance. So we'll go ahead and pull this out of the box here and uh, We'll see how it works. Test it out a little bit here. So bear with me for a second and we'll get this out of the box. I'm serious about that. Oh. All right, on a serious note here. Have you guys ever seen one of these before? This is an airbag jack. That's what it's gonna look like. It's not quite got the capacity of them bottle jacks, but but um, this would be good for doing stuff like this. So we'll see how it works here. It's just like an airbag on an axle. Oh, and it just lifts yeah. it right up. Yeah, so this company sent it to me. So I said, I will, we'll try it. How can you say no? Yeah, right? Yeah. I've never seen something like that before though. Yeah, so we've got a handy dandy handle here. Yeah, looks like it's just, oh, we've got some hardware here. We'll have to get this figured out and then we'll uh, join back up with you in a second here. Of course, made, probably made in China, but um, we'll get this together. Looks like it's got a starting height of about five inches. And we'll see how it goes. Alright, we've got this jack together. It's got a fully collapsed height of six and a half inches. So before we put this under the truck, we'll just air it up. We'll get the actual tallest height of it. And then we'll roll it in under the axle. And let these guys go to town with uh, using it here. They just had a couple of bolts to put the handle together. It's got a little bit of a short handle, but it does have the adjustment to get that handle so you can lay it down flat to get it underneath whatever you're jacking up. This would work good for skid steers, um, trucks, and whatever like that. So Timothy. Alright, 
So it has a jacking height of around 16 inches. So it's got 10 inches of lift height there. So let's go ahead and evacuate the air out of it. And uh, we'll push it in under the truck, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta open up that red one, I think, maybe. That let it out? All right, now I'll try it again. Well, there you have it. It just does not want to work. Wow, yeah. Yeah, it would work good on a skid steer. Let me look at the capacity again on this. Maybe that. Maybe it's not 11 ton. Maybe it's uh. Maybe it's only 11,000 pounds, but still 11,000 pounds. You're only lifting not quite a quarter of it. The truck weighs 27,005 say 28,000 empty right now. There's not a load on this truck. And it doesn't really say I, yeah, it should lift one corner. But, um, yeah, yeah, I'll bring the forklift in. I'll come back to you guys here in a second. I wanna check the actual, lifting capacity of this obviously you're going to want to use jack stands or safety equipment while using something like this but i don't like the fact that it ends up bleeding the air off once it gets to the maximum amount of air pressure to it um i really don't think it's that safe of a of a unit to use maybe lifting something like a skid steer or something something that you have not as much room or as much clearance it might be good for something like that but i'll bring the forklift in we'll try it on the forklift I could try my pickup too and uh i just don't think that's i don't think it's safe enough i mean you look at the air hose on it the air hose is almost like a fish tank hose. <laughs> yeah. And um, I mean, at least the air over hydraulic jack, the air is pumping a hydraulic pump. And if you blow the air hose, you're not going to lose your hydraulic jack. That's going to stay. So we'll bring the forklift in and uh, try that. We'll try it on my pickup too. 
So I was wrong with stating that this jack is good for 11 ton. It is good for 11,000 pounds. But like I was saying, when we were lifting up this truck, it uh, it shouldn't weigh 11, it doesn't weigh 11,000 pounds on the back axle. I mean, there ain't no way. It's The truck gross is, say, 29,000, so it's, yeah. I'll go ahead and try the forklift. The forklift weighs 9,000 total. Oh. So we do have a, a axle problem on this. So this jack would work good for the forklift, for example, because the four jacks that we have are good for three and four ton. This would be an alternative to the floor jack. Um, it's got a little more capacity than an 8,000 pound uh, floor jack. Obviously, you're going to want to put blocking in underneath that because you're trusting the rubber bag and the small rubber hose to hold all that pressure. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description of this video here. For this unit, it is a, oh, what kind is this? Vevor or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, Vev, Vevor, V-E-V-O-R, um, Jack. So we'll go ahead and uh, start working on the combine now. So these guys are going to switch tires and we'll get the combine ready for corn. Well, now we need to get this combine ready for corn. The last crop it harvested was wheat. We've got a couple of bearings to replace. I forgot about that. Got to get them parts ordered. The straw chopper here. The bearing went on this idler pulley right here. I think I might even have one. So we've got to get a new idler pulley on there get our um, straw chopper moved back we've got to pull a couple of sieves out of the bottom of the combine and we need to change the feeder house speed and just run a grease gun around it um, other than that it should be uh, right ready to go here so we're gonna work on that here now the boys are getting Tires switched around on the trucks. We need to get them cleaned up. We need to bolt the tailgate shut on them. And it's going to be a few weeks before we get that silo empty. A couple weeks anyway. So we're hoping that we've got some corn that's dry that we could send to uh, Genoa Commodities. But we better get to work on this thing so that we can get some combining done here all right we've started at this front right corner and we're making our way around the back of the combine down that side and whatever the first thing we did is we changed the feeder house drive speed and we moved the feeder house grate down so we've got the feeder house in uh, low speed right now and all that is is we move this uh, chain from this large sprocket down to this small one. So uh, if you recall back during wheat, we ended up having a bearing go on this one belt tensioner pulley doohickey thing here that drives the straw chopper. As we go into the next crop, it's going to be called a stalk chopper. But uh, there's a drive, a pair of drive belts that come off that driven pulley up there. That pulley also drives the uh, grain tank unload. There's a pair of belts in there that run the grain tank unload. Now the grain tank unload part of that drive pulley turns all the time. 
the other drive pulley that gets engaged when the separator is engaged so those belts come down to this driven pulley here and in this contraption here is the actual belt tensioner for it and this bearing went on this little idler pulley here and it ended up burning up the belts that drive that unit we well we ha we had to cut the belts off of it because they were one was wound up around that pulley and it also ruined one of them drive belts for that grain tank unload so i kind of forgot about that pulley right there i had to get that ordered we'll have that tomorrow along with a set of belts uh i have to move this stalk chopper back but before we do that i've got to put this baffle panel in there that baffle panel goes up in the back of the combine here and it kind of sits above the the stalk chopper and what it does is as the ow, as the material comes off of the walkers which is right here all the trash that is coming off of the back of the combine is being shook up over the top and out the back of these straw walkers the material comes down in through here but it has to be somewhat diverted like this so that it can drop down through the actual chopper assembly itself we're more or less just using it for a diverter so it kind of divides the material up it's it's chopping up the leaves a little bit but it's not really doing uh, that much the other thing we're doing is we're removing the bottom sieve so we've took the um, extension out that's sitting on the ground over there that comes over the top here and then we're removing the bottom sieves so i've got the left one here removed i've got to get the right one out yet and we usually remove these for doing uh, high moisture corn now years ago when we did when we put high moisture corn in the upright silos we we have a set of um, screens here with every other one of these uh, removed so that we could get some cob in with uh, the corn we no longer do that when we do high moisture now we just want just the kernel but back years and years ago um, we would pull them upper screens out and put a set of screens in that had those uh, wires uh, removed now when we get into dry corn we're going to want to put them screens back in but I'm anticipating on being able to go right into high moisture corn here first thing and we more or less need to go after it before it gets drier than say like 25% once we get down below 25% we're going to want to let that go for dry corn because it's not going to pack as well in the silo and it's it's not going to ferment like it should either so we've got to remove the other screen put this uh baffle plate in there move the straw slash stalk chopper back then we've got to put the combine in the low speed run a grease gun around it and then that should wrap up this job here well i've got this baffle up in there i can kind of show you what this looks like here so this is the baffle it's in there and it just diverts the material from when it comes off of the straw walkers directly down into the chopper that is going to get moved back to here so all there is a little crank wheel here there's a track and the pegged wheel just runs in that track that will move that back to the rear position we'll pull that vein panel 
up so that that is running flat off the back of the combine and then that'll do it for that unit there All right, that is up and in place like it's supposed to be. We ended up working on these veins here last winter, straightened them out, kind of rebolted them and got them where they're supposed to be. They're not 100%, but we had a couple of these that were just all wiggly and um, whatever, but we've got some iron that we welded to them there and we've got them bolted into place best we can. So now we just have to run a grease gun around it and we should get our pulley and belts here tomorrow. Well, we have a little break from working on the combine because we're waiting for parts for it. We are into the next day here now and my brother's got this all seeded down to wheat went in here with a potting or tear disc went through and kind of tilled everything up then came in with the grain drill and then rolled it with the right way roller after he got done seeding it he got done with this here and he just, he uh, seen that he had a wheel bearing gone on this inside wheel on the main frame. Now we had a wheel bearing go back when we were putting seedings in on that outer wheel there. And uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do the wheel bearings on all of these wheels. There's eight of them all together on this grain drill. Now if you recall back when we we're putting seeds in. We ended up replacing the two tires on this side. We need to replace the two tires on that side. A few years ago, we ended up rotating the tires. The tires that are on the wings were on the main frame. We moved them out to the wings. We had a couple of, uh, well, we blew, I don't know if we blew a tire or if it was just coming, it was coming apart is what it was so we changed it before it actually blew now this grain drill we have had it for a fair amount of time we have put iron on it once already and it needs iron here again all of the seat opener discs need replacing we'll put all new drive chains on it we've got a couple of sprockets that are Getting down there, this one's okay, but we've got a couple of idler sprockets here, tensioner sprockets. These ones are plastic. And I seen that we had a broken one on here the other day, I don't know where. So this is gonna need a little bit of TLC. I'd like to trade it in, but um, there's nothing really wrong with it. And it has worked out rather well. Between wheat and seedings, it does about 1200 acres a year it does travel over a fair amount of ground but it still kind of looks like new so sarah's robbing a cotter pin out of this pin here and the reason why we're stealing that cotter pin is somebody forgot to bring over new cotter pins for this axle here so i'm not going to say who that was are we no okay so we're just going to rob it out of that pin we'll go ahead and put this hub on there i actually had to buy a new hub the old hub where the seal rode inside the hub was war and i don't know 
if that's what caused the wheel bearing to go or if after the wheel bearing went if it didn't wobble on there a little bit and um, it took out the actual groove for the seal now we actually do have the parts here for the combine uh, they were just dropped off here just a minute before we got our ups delivery for these great plane parts so um, we do have the combine that we can get back on putting together after we get back here with the grain drill sarah's thinking she wants to put the 8320 this is 8320r here on the grain buggy we're not sure if we're going to let her do that or not the 7200r needs brakes again why does it need brakes yeah, we had a uh, amateur punking, uh, pa punking, punking bunk, packing bunk, and same reason why we had to replace the brakes on it last time, which was two years ago, was because we had an amateur packing bunk then too. So we just can't seem to. Uh, make out too well with that so we've got to get the brakes done on that 7200 as well we did do some moisture tests on some corn that we have we've got some corn left on this farm that corn over there is 35 percent moisture the uh one field that we tested was 30 so we do have for the most part all high moisture corn right at the moment here so Let's go ahead and get this hub on there and get the wheel on and get the heck out of here. All right, we've got the hub on there. We've just got to put the wheel on and we're just pumping the hub full of grease. Don't worry, that grease gun does not have wheel bearing grease in it. However, we did pack the bearings with wheel bearing grease. So we're just gonna let that do its thing here. There's probably enough in there already. Maybe we can overfill it and uh, let the dust cap pop off and be doing these bearings all over again, but um, that should probably have enough in it by now. So we'll just stop that like that. Pull this guy off of there. Looks like we might have to raise the uh, grain drill up a little bit. Got these cylinder stops here that need to be put well that one needs to be put up into place i don't know if well i might be able to roll that tire in there think we could roll the tire in there mm -hmm. well go ahead mm -hmm. you you try it okay. all of youtube wants to know if that can be rolled in there and i gotta hold the camera so go ahead roll it in there let's see if it fits oh <laughs> yeah yeah, I think we got to lay it down and then get that. Yeah, nothing's easy. All right, now we've got that raised up. Extended that cylinder out all the way and we're able to put that cylinder stop up in there. Now let's see if it goes on. Do we have to dig a hole underneath that uh, hub or not? That block of wood has, you got that the right way? Yep, yep, very good. No, I don't know. We might have to dig some dirt out from underneath the tire. Oh, no. We have one other option. You know how we can do this? We can back off that block of wood, put the block of wood out here and try it again. Unless you can kick some dirt out from underneath that tire. Okay, yeah, and then, yeah, we got a divot there, though, too. Uh, I don't have another block of wood, do I? No, I don't. Well, that's not going to work. We'll have to pull ahead, move the block of wood, and drive up on it again.
6. You can start putting them in. Well, we're able to we're able to dig out just enough dirt there. However, there's a freaking stone right underneath that tire. But it was just enough because that hub is right where it needs to be in the wheel. So we'll go ahead and we'll get those studs tight and get this grain drill home and then we can work on getting the combine um, finished up. We've got to put a belt and a pulley on it. And then we'll... Uh, Get a couple of doors. I've got to lower the sound loader yet tonight. And uh, and that'll wrap things up for uh, today. All right, so I'm going to climb up in. And we're going to... I call it taking a door out. It's actually lowering the unloader. And Sarah wants to crawl up in here and see what this job is all about. So, I'm going to climb up in there first. We don't have to go up there that far. Uh, what there is is a spout on there that has the clean chute hook to it. I'll kick that in. I'll wait for her to climb up. She'll get in the silo, and then she can watch or film. That, that's what you can do. You can film what I'm doing, because I have to take a door out, put it up in the hole that's above it, and so on and so forth. So... Let's go ahead and get climbed up in here. So this has a access door right on the side of the silo chute here. So we'll open this up. What we have is the clean chute that is hooked to a spout up there, which is not that far up. We're up. Oh, how far up are we? One, two, three, four. We're up there six, seven doors. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera in my pocket so that it doesn't end up getting covered with dust. And we'll join up with you once we get into the silo here. <clears throat> okay, so I am up in the silo chute right now. And... I don't know how well you can see this. Maybe we ought to get old light out here. All right, we got old light out. This is the the blower pipe on the unloader right here, coming out this door. Uh, Sarah just crawled in. I oh, I came up. I pushed this one door in right here, and then that spout right there is what the clean spout clean chute is hooked to, and that was in this door opening. Uh, right here so I push that in what we need to do is we need to put that clean chute spout in that door hole that is right in below us here so I'm gonna throw the camera down to Sarah and she's going to uh, film the procedure in which it takes to get this power cord uh right here move down to the next hole then I'll, I'll i'll explain it as i go so we'll hand her the flashlight and the camera you can hear the old 900 <coughs> roar and Oh, wow. 
one of two ways here. I can just take my green spout like this. I can set that here. I pull my Okay, so we are down out of the silo, and then this clean chute works really nice because it directs the corn right into this handy spout we've got. Um, I know it, it doesn't really leave us too clean, but it actually uh, makes a huge difference because it's not pounding that chute full of dust. It's filling it full of dust, but it's not as much as it could be. So we just cut this off, like a so. Discard that piece there. And then we just drop this here down into this gray uh, part of the auger hopper. Then we go over here and we have to pull our little indicator down, which is just a piece of handy dandy uh, balance twine. I know some guys use zip ties, other guys use this and use that, but we used to use a clothespin and it got knocked off one time, I assume by a bird or something so this string works better so now what we're going to do is i'm going to go in and i'm going to start the unloader and i'm going to run the auger the reason why i want to start the unloader is because for some small reason maybe i forgot to plug it in mm. and the worst thing about this is come tomorrow morning you gotta turn that silo on and it doesn't turn on. And instead of having the easy job of sitting in the payload or loading feed yeah. and drinking coffee, you gotta go and get dirty again and go off and plug the unloader in. So long as you're dirty, you make sure everything is good to go. So I'll fire that up and then we can <clears throat> work on the combine, right? Why is it that you didn't get as dirty as I got? Uh -huh. You don't know? I guess you know how to work clean, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and work on this combine. We'll join up with you once uh, we get our parts here into place. Okay, so we have this job wrapped up. Uh, this bearing went on this pulley. That's the story behind that. 
We've talked about it, whatever. So we've got that new pulley in there, new belt. Everything's ready to go on the combine. However, we need to get the grain buggy out tomorrow. And we actually have to figure out where we're going to start with this corn. I'm hoping that we can sneak out some dry corn for a few days to a week to 10 days or whatever before we get into doing any high moisture. Earlier on in the video, we had the uh, airbag jack. It's a handy jack. Be careful what you use it for. What we plan on using it for is something that has low clearance, uh, forklift, uh, skid steers, gator, pickup truck, stuff like that. It's only rated for 11,000 pounds. Um, those items there are light enough that that jack will work fine for. The other advantage to that jack is it's unlike a floor jack. In other words, it lifts straight up. It doesn't lift forward or lift backwards and it doesn't require the jack to move as it's it's raising so it goes straight up like a bottle jack and it is okay for those type of applications there's a link in the description they reached out to me said hey uh we want you to do a video on it i get so sick and tired of all these companies wasting my time and theirs with sending me uh stuff to do videos on and i figured well let's let's try it um again it's handy for minimal things but not everything so we will get moving along here i guess sun's going down it's about 6 30 at night and that is gonna do it for this video i want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you at the next one right mm -hmm. yeah what tractor do you want to put on the grain buggy? 8320. 8320? The old one or the new one? The new one. The, the, the R. You need. It's not new, but it's newer to us. So take it easy, folks. Thanks again for watching.